Hi, my name is Rudy Rona. I'm an Autodesk Certified Instructor and an Applications Engineer here at ATG, focusing on the architectural and engineering building industries. I want to welcome you to our presentation for 3DX Max versus Showcase. Today, we are going to fo focus on some of the capabilities of each software and how it pertains to the building industry. We'll explore some of the differences between the two programs in hopes that you have a greater understanding on how and when to implement the programs in your workflow and design processes. Some of our objectives today that we're going to be covering um, are going to be over the Autodesk 3D Max Design and Showcase. Um, a little bit more in the detail on that, we're going to explore some design concepts for 3DX Max Design, uh, validate some design concepts, and communicate um, some of those design concepts as well. For Showcase, we're going to be adjusting um, interoperable models, setting um, a scene up, talking about presentation uh, components. And then we're going to look at the suite workflows. So within um, the programs, the, we have you know, the ability to work within the suite, um, a function for 3DX Max, um, and then using reference uh, for Revit as well. And that's an also in Showcase, being able to be in those programs, uh, be in the Revit program, and, and export to those programs out um, easily within you know, a few clicks of, clicks of a button. So we're going to go over some of those options as well. So Autodesk 3D Max um, design, it delivers an extensive data interoperability uh, with widely used Autodesk design software like um, AutoCAD, Revit, um, Inventure, and Showcase, uh, those products um, so that you can spend more time creating and less time tracking down data. So that's a list here of all of the um, other programs that are interoperability um, that you'll be able to use with, with 3DS Max. So we're going to explore some of the design concepts. So typically, you'll utilize um, the, the conceptual phase. You'll utilize some of these components in the project, and you're able to create uh, unique organic forms, so forms that may otherwise require some very technical operations to achieve in a 3D design software like Revit. Um, you're able to generate and control um, the architectural forms tactically with scripts um, and explore your concepts' impact early in the design process. So you can be able to utilize some of those tools in, um, in 3DX Max. So exploring some of our design concepts, um, you have the freedom to ex experiment during the con uh, conceptual stage, enables you to be more quickly explore design alternatives and gain a better understanding of um, impact on your ideas earlier. So 3DX Max Design software offers a powerful modeling um, tool set that, com that complements the BIM workflow. So the software enables you to more freely create and manipulate um, complex organic shapes, drive geometry um, procedurally, and set the matter of, uh, via built-in rules-based modifications and constraints. And so um, you can also organize and apply your, your own rules um, with the modifier uh, stack in 3D Max Design. So validating uh, the design concepts, you can put your design in context, uh, create animated walkthroughs, um, a line of sight studies, and uh, physically accurate daylight analysis. So you and your clients can better understand how design functions um, and, overall, and the overall look of your design. A high, in, a high impact visualization of a model can make the difference between winning a bid and walking away empty handed. So um, having these tools and these design, co design concepts within uh, 3DX Max is very valuable. Communicating design concepts, you can help customers make uh, crucial decisions during the design reviews um, that gain uh, valuable buy-in at every stage. So you can create emotionally engaging narratives to communicate um, information quickly and compelling um, and persuasively. So uh, you can use some of those enhancements um, in your design by adding um, organic materials and elements such as drapes, um, bedding, sofas, and towels, um, real or, or stylized characters, props, and lighting. So um, something that you would have a hard time doing in some of the design softwares, um, you have better 
um, freedom and and motions to be able to to create these design concepts in uh, 3DX Mac design. So Autodesk uh, Showcase talking a little bit about that. Um, it's a it's a 3D visualization and 3D presentation software. Um, it provides an easy to use presentation and design exploration tools for architects, uh, designers, engineers, and marketing professionals. So you can adjust the interoperable models. So you can quickly transform 3D CAD and Revit models into interactive walkthroughs and presentations so that um, you can evaluate aesthetic and design alternatives in real time with peers um, you know, and, and customers. And so having that tool available to you is, um, is, is, is great. I mean, it's, it's huge value for the clients to be able to do a conceptual design um, and then bring these into, um, into the showcase environment. Um, a difference between the 3DX Max and Showcase is that you're not able to create uh, the geometry within a program. So um, you're only able to you know, extract, manipulate, and copy materials that you bring in. So, um, but this operation is much faster than doing it in Revit or in AutoCAD. So talking about setting a scene, um, we've got um, lighting environments, we've got the environments, uh, lights and shadows, accent lights, um, so materials, image maps, decal materials. Um, the Autodesk Showcase software enables you to add an environment to, and visually, visually, visually enhance a scene. Um, the environment adds a background, associated lights, shadows, um, to improve the realism of the model. So, the background of the environment is a high dynamic range image or a HDR image, um, which is a shape that can completely surround the model. Just giving you some uh, the, the kind of workflow overview of that um, and some of the icons of those tools within the product within the product. So some of the presentation con uh, con components are uh, one's going to be the design alternatives um, or variations to the design or materials. You can arrange these alternatives in a lineup interface, um, which you can toggle on and off between between those views and those design alternatives. You have um, cross sections. Um, those are also used in the pre uh, presentation uh, process. Those can be used for cutting planes that display the inner um, configurations of a model. So cross sections can be saved as um, alternatives and presets as a part of your design configuration. So shots are um, preset views of a scene that can be put together in an animated um, design. So viewing an angle or magnifying um, to a certain object can be set and focused um, in a specific area or an object. Um, it can be presented and viewed in a shot and then later on saved. So um, it's a good, it's also a good presentation um, feature. Behaviors. Um, behaviors are, are a little bit tricky. Um, they're, they're kind of cool. Uh, they're functions that are applied to an object and they control the movement um, and they add animation. So if it's, you know, um, opening doors or, or, you know, having some kind of animated function to your model, um, that's, that's what the behavior feature is. A uh, storyboard is uh, used to graphically represent a sequence of steps that are being presented in, to the audience. And so it's sort of like a, collabor a collaboration of all of these other uh, presentation components put together. And so it's all managed, manageable and put together on a storyboard um, so that you can be able to view these uh, different design alternatives, sections and shots and videos and behaviors all collaboratively together. Um, in, a, in a nice format um, in a storyboard where you can adjust um, the speed of how that's being presented and shown. Last presentation component is um, publishing. Uh, this publishing can be done in different ways, um, images, movies, YouTube videos, um, and web presentations. So talking a little bit about the suite um, workflows, um, with 3DX Max, um, with 
with file linking leaks or references are established between the design data associated with objects um, in the source file and the object in the target file. So this can be um, linked and updated, modified, or replaced. So when the source file changes, modifications to properties such as materials or textures can be updated in the target file. This, um, this is, uh, includes by type. So uh, specifies you know, which object types are imported from a um, source model and also um, combined entities. So that specifies how Revit objects are grouped and organized in 3DX Max. So you have material, um, category, family types. Um, and, and if you don't like to um, combine, if you don't want to combine anything, essentially what's going to happen is um, 3DX Max is going to identify the, uh, every instance and every component as its own. So typically uh, with more complex models, that's not recommended because um, that's going to actually um, increase the size of your model and it's going to slow down things and might you might get get into some um, some some inaccurate or or slowing down in the model um, so it might act a little bit weird for you if you decide to um, do not combine those entities showcase um, these options are more focused on visual style or appearance um, and are broken down into to two general types um, abstract and realistic. And so abstract styles are recommended for conceptual designs or work in progress as they um, clearly show the relative sizes and proportions of objects. And we've got the realistic styles. Um, those are recommended for more advanced designs. Um, these styles are uh, show the details more clearly. So um, you can kind of choose those two between those two options um, when exporting the, um, the Revit files to in the showcase so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the software a little bit and we're going to kind of demonstrate um, some of some off some procedures and um, kind of show you the environment firsthand um, and, and how that works and so we're going to go ahead and jump into 3dx max design here and so what we're looking at is the interface of this design and so what we're going to go ahead and do we're going to create a tower and so we're going to use some of the uh, some of the just basic geometry um, information here to be able to construct this this conceptual design. This is going to be in the conceptual design phase of a project, and so um, this is where we're going to create our our, our model. Uh, we're going to manipulate it, and then um, and then probably produce a, a rendering of it as well. And so we go ahead and start. We've got our different views here that we can toggle on and off. We've got our um, our top view, our front view, left, and perspective. So this gives you a wide variety of being able to transition over from any different view um, at any time. And so in my perspective view here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Create panel. And I want to um, create a geometry in this geometry here. And I want to activate my box. And right now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to create a box really with no particular uh, size. I'm just going to conceptually create a, a quick box in here. And in my modifier here, I'm going to change some of the um, properties of this box. So um, going in, I'm going to change the length here. Uh, let me change this to 70. And I want to change this to 70 as well. And maybe the height to 30. Uh, link segments, or the, the link segments here, um, these are just the, the graphical um, grids that are going to be in here. So that's going to allow me to um, identify and look at those planes and those vertices so that splits everything up um, nicely for me, if I, however I like to have it. And I'm, maybe I probably wanted to customize some of my, um, my settings here. Um, And change some of my units here, my unit setups. I think that let me use. I'm just going to use the meters here. 
And you can also change use this to US standard. You can change the decimal inches. You can change the feet. Um, for this exercise, I'm utilizing the meters, so I want to maybe change these back to um, some other values here. I was using meters to begin with. So. So now I'm looking at something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing um, that I can that I can manipulate, um, and I want to be able to use this conceptual design. Uh, so the segments are necessary to define the tower floor and window grid, and so that's why I've set up these uh, these lengths and these widths and the height of this model. And so normally, um, you know, this building would you know it's, it's split up the way it's split up. Um, in real size, so you can again, you can use your your feet or meters or however you want to use this. Um, also, you can name this appropriately. So I want to come in here and just name it to tower. And when I select this back, I can see um, what I've got here. So in my modifier list, I want to adjust some of these things. So I want to change this to uh, taper. I want to be able to modify this shape here. So in the parameters uh, rollout here, I have my amount. So I'm going to change this to negative 0.5 and my curve to, I don't know, uh, negative, point, um, negative 0.9. And that's going to, so looking at this, my taper amount here, this is going to be uh, my curve and my, my taper amount. Um, the negative amount value tapers uh, building inward at the top, and the negative um, curve value pulls the sides of the building in. Um, so that's kind of showing you how that works there. Next, I'll, I want to give the tower a little twist. And so from the modifier list here, um, I want to choose twist. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. So I'm going to type in twist. So also in the parameters layout here, I have uh, my angle and my uh, my bias, and so my angle. I want to change this to 90, and my bias. I want to change this to uh, 45. So 90 degree twist value creates a, a quarter turn of the building. The bias value of 45 causes the twist um, to stay uh, part way up the side of the building rather than immediately. Um, at its base, and so that's going to start part way up here, roughly around this area here. <clears throat> so to give the building a, a, a serpent-like quality, uh, from the from the modifier list here, I want to be able to I want to choose um, let's choose the FFD box. <coughs> so that's a free form deformation, is what FFD sounds uh, stands for. Um, that's going to surround the selected geometry with adjustable uh, latest box. And so that's going to allow me to uh, manipulate this at a set number of points. And so let's go to our dimensions here, click set number of points. And for my length, I want to hit 2. Uh, width, I'm going to hit 2. And height, I'm going to hit 7. All right. So the modifier. Um, Stack, I'm going to, you know, go ahead and expand um, out this FFD um, options, and I want to click the hierarchy, um, choose the control points, um, and this lets you select the multiple, um, manipulate the latest controls points um, that you def that I defined previously in my in my previous step here. Um, so now I can I can go to my front view. So I'm just going to toggle here, go to my front view, where I can be able to do this function a little bit more easily. Uh, I want to choose my my option here to uh, to select. And I want to select these top rows here. And so by selecting that I can activate my move. <coughs> and I can I can move this and manipulate this shape a little bit more, giving it a, cur a curve um, like feature to to my to my structure here. Okay? So then I want to, I'm just going to go ahead and choose this portion here as well, and I want to move that um, a little bit out to kind of give this a little bit of a curve um, and maybe move this a little bit here just to add a 
little bit more drastic look here. So now I'm just going to exit out of here. I can just click my, um, just out, click outside here. Now looking at my shape, um, it's a little bit more modified. Now it looks a little bit more curved, a little bit more interesting. Um, and if I'm pleased with that, then I can go ahead and um, my next step would be to uh, create the mullions for this building. So adding the mullions, um, we can go ahead and we'll start by uh, select a glazing object in the tower. So um, from the menu bar, we're going to choose the edit uh, the clone. So edit clone here in this drop down. While it's selected, we're going to say clone. And so now we have the option of being able to clone this object. And so we're going to use a reference. Uh, what reference is a newly created mole, uh, when we create our newly created mullions, um, objects behave in a specific way. And so any um, subsequent uh, edits and mullions and the objects are, are not affected by the glazing object. So we're copying this. It's referencing it. But it's not affecting uh, any changes from when I create this object. So I'm going to call this glaze. Actually, I'm going to call this, I'm sorry, I'm going to call this mullions. And I want to make a copy of this. So I'm copying that. So now you can see that I have my mullions and I have my tower with the same number of um, modifiers applied to it. So uh, if I if I click here, um, right click on my viewport. I have my 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 millions um, active here. I'm going to right click on my viewport, and I want to choose isolate selection. So by choosing isolate selection, that turns off my tower, enabling me to work just freely on my uh, my millions copy uh, clone that I created. So now um, I'm able to go through on my modifier modifier list here. And I want to expand. Um, I want to add a uh, edit poly edit poly modifier. So I'm going to hit edit poly. That's going to allow me to edit some uh, poly configuration. So now I'm going to notice now that there's this gray line dividing the two. That's signifying that everything from this point up um, is going to be new added to this uh, to this geometry here. And everything from there, from this gray line below, is going to uh, remain as is, um, as the model was before. So it's going to keep those two uh, separated. And so now, um, activating my viewport here, um, I want to zoom in orbit and pan. Um, let's go ahead and use our um, our different views here. So now, let's go ahead and go to our. We have to have this selected here, okay? So edit poly, uh, let's go to our polygon. So we'll need to uh, remove some unneeded polygons. So we'll activate our perspective view. And I want to just go ahead and do that. Um, obviously, it's, there's my, my polygon option here is selected. I can see it's selected here as well. Uh, we're going to hit the roof option here. And we're going to select this option. We're going to use the uh, grow to be able to just quickly select the rest of this. We're going to delete this as well. And we're going to repeat this process with the bottom. So I'm just going to navigate to the bottom, select this geometry. I'm going to grow here, and I'm going to delete. <clears throat> so again, I'm, I'm creating my mullions for my building, for my structure here. Um, so I want to create the outer surfaces of it. So I'm, I'm basically. Um, removing some elements from this from this model. So now if I go to, um, so I'll create insets for the uranium polygons, which you can use for window mullions. So I'll turn the mullion object um, into a lace and the latest. So I'll, I can hit um, my, my shift Z just to kind of go back to my, my view if I wanted to do that. Um, if I did my control A, I'm going to select all of my, my options here. And I want to go to edit polygons. Um, scroll down, edit polygons. And sometimes you can you can expand this out to be able to see um, these options a little bit better. So edit polygons, I want to hit my inserts. 
And that's going to allow me to, uh, it's going to, 3x Max is going to display the caddy controls for the um, insert inset tool. And so I want to go ahead and um, set this by, uh, by polygon. And second control now, I want to hit, I'm going to change this to 0 0.3. And then I'm going to hit OK. So what that did is that allowed uh, the spacing in between here in between my grids to expand out uh, 0.3 meters. And so I've basically um, you know, identified the, the, the thickness of that, of that material. So um, now I, what I want to do is with those selected, I want to delete. So essentially, I've deleted all my polygon surfaces. And also, I have, um, I have increased the, the thickness of, these, uh, of my intersections here to give it a more of a um, emollient um, effect and look. And so uh, I already removed those. So I'm now if I want to uh, click my polygon here, I can click out of my, um, my poly selection. So now I can just, again, I can look at my, my emollients. Now, if I want to make my emollients thicker, um, I can go to my modifier, modifier list here, um, and I can choose. Uh, in my, for my modify selection, I can choose uh, shell, and so um, where I want to select that, where is it here? It's going to be in my object space modifiers. So let's find that here. Can't find. I can't seem to find it. But um, what we can do is we can uh, this. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and just continue on. But uh, these, uh, when I find if I find my object uh, space modifiers, I can um, uh, adjust that the thickness of this and what this looks like. I'm just going to add a little bit of thickness. I was just going to add, you know, 0.3. Uh, meters to it. I think I already may have already actually I've already applied that. So we can go ahead and just continue on. Um, we're going to go ahead and now. So so now we've got our our model ready here. If I was to go to uh, right click and just say in isolation. Now I've got my building, uh, my tower here, which is selected, and I've got my moles applied to um, my building. So now I'm going to create a metallic shell. So um, going through, if I uh, again, I'm just going to go through and um, analyze my model just a little bit. Uh, if I go through my icons here, and I can go again to my tower, and I'm going to go ahead again and clone this again. And I want to name this. Um, let's name this metallic shell. Lazy. So in the modifier panel here, I want to expand out um, my F D here and my lot my my odd cons here that I can turn off my twist, I can turn off my taper, so I can I can give it a little bit more um, see kind of what it was before and I can turn off 
this as well. So I'm looking and exposing this um, how it's how it was before. So um, now going through, I want to be able to go to my perspective views. I want to choose some of these options. I want to go to orthographic, um, and I want to go to maybe front. And I'm going to turn my grids off. So I want to be able to edit and modify this. So I'm looking at my metallic shell glazing, and I'm going to alter that. And I just want to go through, and I'm just going to isolate the selection so that I can make sure that I'm not selecting any other components here. So then going through um, my modifier list, I want to go through Edit Poly. And I want to do this drop down, say Poly. Uh, I want to select some polygons here. And I want to make sure that um, my ignore back facing is not on. So if I have this on, uh, what's going to happen is when I'm going through selecting this, the components and, and, and on the other side of the object are going to be selected as well. If I, if I, if I hit ignore back facing, it's going to allow me to pick just the face object and not the back facing as well. So if I go back to my view here, front view, uh, with this option turned off, when I do my, um, my polygon selection here, um, I can just come through and I'm, it should be change this to orthographic. If I select this, it should select on the other side. Actually, it's not. So I'm going to select this. All right, so I want to basically I want to select and I want to remove some of these um, some of these options here. I want to I want to create a glazing over. Um, so I want to just select some of these um, these polygons here, and I can hit my control key. Um, I can select multiple um, options at once. And so by selecting this, I'm removing some of these components. <coughs> there and if you notice it's done the same thing on the back side so um, I wish I, that's what I want so I want to go ahead and continue uh, selecting and, and removing some of these options so again using my control key I want to remove some of these options here and maybe select this so really, I mean, you can you can go through your design um, and be as creative as as you as you want to uh, with this. And so, creating these these components, I mean, that that gives you the ability to be able to just conceptually um, create these uh, how you would like. So, um, going through, I'm just deleting and removing some objects that I don't want. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'm just going to do a little bit different design. I'm just going to do squares. All right. So now that I've got my design how I want how I want to. Um, then I can go ahead and just delete. I'm deleting my polygons. Um, now I've created the opening, the building side of, of, of the material. So now if I apply back my modifiers here, I can um, hit my twist and my taper, and I can see uh, those being applied um, to my structure.
So continuing on, um, if I want to then again turn these on, I could turn them on there. I could have right clicked um, and you know uh, in my isolation. And so that's going to be my building um, in a conceptual stage of it with my mullions. Um, with my, my glazing and my tower effect to it. So now I'm ready to, to uh, create and apply materials. And so I can um, edit and, and use my, my tool modifier here, uh, my material editor. And so I can expand this out. You can use this interface or you can hit these different models and we can go to uh, a slate material editor as well. So if we use this, we can go through and look through just a, a multitude of different materials, uh, maps, and controllers, uh, really a large variety of different um, controls and different environments and materials that we can add. So um, one, I want, to, um, I want to add, let's see here, a metal to my mullions. So I want to hit that, and I want to um, just go to metal. And let's just use we're just going to use metal here. It really, uh, a lot of people find this, this compact material editor to be a little bit more helpful. Um, it allows you to kind of go through and, and, and um, be able to select and, and, and apply these materials a little bit better. So kind of going through here, we'll look at some of these options. We've got our metal. You know, I'm going to just apply this to my mullions. So you can see here, this applied that material to my mullions. Um, and so now that's going to give it a metal look. So if I turn these off, um, I can see that metal material be applied. So now if I'm going to go through, uh, through my glazing here, and let's go ahead and set this to a different material. Uh, might want to use this uh, uh, use change this to something else. So looking at this option here, I'm just seeing kind of what material added um, in place. So that's the properties of the material here. Um, and some more controls on being able to uh, to control what my renderings are, uh, illumination, glow, uh, reflective, uh, reflectivity, glossiness. So if I want this to be more of a glossy, I can change that to another figure and a number. Uh, reflectivity as well. Um, so there's just a n different options for being able to create uh, what this is being represented as. So that's being applied. And for my tower, I want to change this to a solid glass as well. So now that that's applied, I want to now show this. This is my building, and this is kind of what it looks like uh, with some materials added and applied to it. Oh, let's see here. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is what my building kind of looks like. Um, so being able to render this is like a, a conceptual design phase of a project. Um, being able to create um, just the outer shell of a building uh, with some complex geometries and shapes. And so something that it would be kind of difficult to do in Revit uh, or in AutoCAD even. So um, and to be able to apply these materials, you can see that shine effect that I've added to that as well. Uh, being able to control and create these uh, geometries within um, CDX Max, and then exporting it out to uh, another program like Revit or AutoCAD um, is, a, is, a, is a very high high tool. So even going through and presenting this to, uh, conceptually to a client, you can uh, go through to render this as well and just see how this is and how this turns out to be. So um, kind of seeing a little preview of what the rendering is going to look like. 
and I've got to apply my different materials. Uh, rendering options as well that I can change. There's lots of varieties of different uh, rendering capabilities within the software. And so you can go through and change some of these settings. Um, you have a lot more you have a lot more options than you would like in Revit. Um, you have, you know, just the output size uh, area of the rendering. Uh, so you can change it to view or selection or crop or region. So you can really um, go through and fine tune what areas and what, what you're looking at. You can also adjust the frames. Um, you can change the, the, the rendering output of these files as well. Um, you can also uh, do email notifications and um, assign renderers. So, uh, and then you can just render this as well. So this is going to be the same option as, as this, except it's going to give you a little bit more flexibility on what the options are and how you want those to be applied. And so um, doing this previously, I've, I've created and, and did a rendering of this building. It looks a little bit different than what I did before, but um, just, just showing you here is an image file of that of that rendering that those materials added to that. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into just closing out of this. I'm going to go ahead and jump into um, showcase and show a little bit about showcase. Now again, back to 3DX Max for a little bit. 3DX Max is a very popular tool in Hollywood. I mean, they do movies, um, they do animations, gaming. Um, so cars and manufacturers and, and so there's a lot of uh, a wide variety of um, usage for the 3DX Max software um, and then utilizing also for conceptual phases in a in the architectural building industries that can be used for that as well so being able to render uh, apply those materials and, um, and manipulate again back to um, what we spoke about later uh, earlier on be able to put in organic um, designs that you can manipulate and, and, and apply materials to um, within the software is, is valuable. So 3DX Max Design is, can be widely utilized for a lot of um, different functions. And so this is going to be my showcase um, uh, atmosphere and environment. So I've got my um, setup here and I'm just going to expose and, and turn on this. So first thing, if I, if I was bringing in a, like a Revit file, um, I would have to have you know that set up and, and brought in. So I would need to import that in, so to import that file. So uh, I've kind of already got an, a, a, a file that I want to use here. Um, I'm going to use this open. You want to choose some of the settings. Um, and, and you can choose kind of what uh, showcase is importing into the file. And so um, I want to choose a view. And so what, the, what showcase is going to do is going to search through my 3D views, um, any kind of views that I have created in my model. It's going to bring that and load that in. Um, into my showcase environment. So it's identifying that and calculating it. <clears throat> Once that populates, I can then go through, I can select what options I want, what views I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and just proceed with my 3D view. And I want to now look at my shots. So any kind of shots, camera views, or anything that I, I've created in my model, I can also bring that information over into my environment. And so um, I'm just going to select I'm just going to go ahead and select everything because I want everything to come through. Um, and then I want to go ahead and also choose my environment. So you can choose whatever environment you want, or you can just uh, have an empty environment, essentially, and then apply that later on. So that's not a big deal. Um, and then going through my, my scene selections, I can choose um, what elements I want to uh, bring over. So 3D models, um, some lights, some sections and materials, or I can choose the little refined options here. And again, my, my model here. So I'm going to close that. Once my settings have been applied, I want to import. So that's going to import my geometry, import my, my model that's converting everything over to a showcase file. And, and depending on the size of the model, it's, it might take a little long, uh, uh, you know, sometime to, to bring into the environment. Once it's brought in, you can 
uh, you'll see how easy it is to uh, to manipulate it and to navigate and to navigate around the model. So it's it's converting the model over. Um, it shouldn't be too much longer. So because I've selected all of those um, different selections, uh, it's bringing in my ambient shadow rendering. Um, it's, it's bringing in the more selections that you have that you choose when you're bringing in this content, um, the slower it's going to be. So it's, it's, it's kind of thinking a little bit more here. So there we go. <coughs> so I brought in my environment. This is just a, a, a building here. Um, and I'm just looking at some of this here. So I've got my my task UI here. So my first thing, it's kind of like a, it's pretty easy to, to operate from. You can either use to choose these ribbons here, or you can choose to use this. And you can kind of just go down the line. Um, and so you can go by just opening the file here. Um, you can also, first thing that I like to do is I like to, um, you know, set my lighting in my environment. So you have some lighting environments. I want you to turn my, my, um, my environments here. I want to be able to see all my selections. And so um, you can you can bring in these different environments. Again, these are um, the HDR uh, image files, and so um, I can go through and choose these selections. Or if I wanted to, if I created my own, um, I can bring that in as well from from different locations. So um, you know, I, I actually I had some in here, but that was in the computer. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and choose uh, you know an, an environment to bring this in. So let's see what this one does here. If I want to hit that, so it's importing my environment components. So here, shortly, it's going to bring that in. So. Looking at this, this is probably really small, so I can look at my properties. And I can adjust uh, my, my controls here. I, want to, I can adjust the sunlight. I can see how that's being shown. So obviously, there's my environment there. Um, and then the background is what I want to adjust. So the size is probably very small, so I want to create and adjust the size of my model. So that's a little bit better. Um, also, let's see here, we've got the shape of positioning. So if I want to uh, rotate this a little bit more, uh, obviously I put this in the, in the crazy environment. So let's just turn this over here uh, like so. And then um, you, know, you can adjust the size again um, however you want to have that represented. So to change environments is pretty easy to do. Um, and then you can go back um, and change some of the, the, the instances here I can change things to brighter, to, to, to more incandescent, so I can change some of the saturation levels to uh, enhance kind of the visual aspect and color of this, of this background. And so uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to save that, save that, and close. And so now looking at my model, you can see that it's kind of giving it a global effect and enclosing the area here. But that's going to be just a, applying an, a, a lighting and environment background. Again, you can adjust some of these, um, you know, whatever background you want to bring into, and in whatever environment you can adjust some of the uh, the environment uh, settings for these environments to kind of display how you want to. So um, you can also come to uh, set environment for positions, and you want to make sure if your model is not on the floor, you can move the bottom of the model uh, to the model and you say, say, okay, that's going to situate and, and move the, the model down. And so going down, um, I can do some adjust lighting. So if I don't like where my light direction is coming from, I can hit my light, and I can adjust that I can just by simply, simply uh, dragging and applying some hitting my light option here. And you can see that wherever I drag, I'm, I'm adjusting the light shadows um, and how it's being represented. So 
for renderings, uh, for representation of, of where this is at, I can really adjust this and display how I like to display it. So again, with the shadows as well, I can adjust my shadow and how that's being casted. And so just being able to have the flexibility to be able to show some of this, and maybe I want to adjust my brightness, overall brightness level of my model, or maybe I want to keep it um, a little bit lower. And so I have all the ability in the world to be able to uh, change some of those. Now looking, at, I'm going to close out of my environment themes. Uh, looking at some of my materials and my, and my, I can look at how I want to see this. So if I want to look at this at ray tracing, um, then I can hit it at ray tracing. If you have it at ray tracing while you're working on it, then you're going to, obviously going to be a little bit slow while you're moving around. And so I wouldn't uh, really recommend that you use the ray tracing option. Um, but when you move it around, you can, you can set the, the level of detailing um, for how you want your, your visual styles to be represented for your model. And so um, that's going to be some of those options. Um, let's go ahead and we're just going to change this back to uh, shading. So let's go ahead and we're kind of running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the materials. So you can access that, you can type in M uh, to access my materials here. So what you can do is you can see how I can just quickly, um, I can select these certain faces and objects, not really necessarily um, identifying these as anything uh, but surfaces. And so uh, these materials are also brought in from um, all these materials that are listed in here. Are, and available are from Revit as well, and whatever program that you bring, uh, bring this in. So you can choose these different uh, materials. These are the materials that are being applied to this, um, to the scene, and to some of these objects. And so, looking at some of these other materials, I want to go through and see. Let's see what's in metal here. Um, I'm going to use this this really cool grill. And so I'm going to apply that to that. Um, now zoom in to my uh, to my view. I can see that being applied. And so now uh, I have my grill option that's being up here. So if I wanted to uh, maybe have that applied to everything else in my building, I can right-click this. I can say uh, select all objects with materials, and I can um, I can assign that to my grill uh, grill material. So now you can see that that's been applied to everything that's associated to that material in the model. And so if I needed to modify that list a little bit, I, or how that's being represented or shown, I can hit my properties and for some reason that dialog box is not popping up so again uh, time constraints we're going to go ahead and move on a little bit faster I'm going to storyboard here. Um, let's go to let's go to our parent. Um, oh, that's our that's box pulling up here. So um, alternatives. Okay, so accessing some of our alternatives. Um, you can go. You can hit the create uh, material lineup. I can add a material. So um, this being one of my material number one um, that I can just apply. Let me just hit this and say add to selection. And so um, then if I hit say I change this material, um, select all objects, and I change this to some uh, to aluminum, um, or actually let's change this to a glass material. Let's change it to a tinted glass material. So again, if I wanted to um, set that in there, I can now set my other selection to there to that. So being able to toggle on and off between my two different um, options here is going to be it's going to be valuable um, for you and your clients to be presenting. And so. Um, again, we, we're kind of running out of time for this presentation, and so um, just
just being able to show uh, what those are and how those transition over and just being able to show different materials. And accidentally, I, for my first selection, I selected that and this is just um, copy material and I want to So as you can see, I can switch over from different views and different materials, back and forth, different alternatives. So just a little bit about showcase. Um, you know, you can do again the behavioral behaviors, the snapshots, um, the camera views, and stuff like that. Um, you can manipulate and showcase your model um, in different ways. And so going back over, um, we kind of run out of time. So um, for this presentation, but. Um, Switch over to this. Uh, so that kind of concludes our, our webinar. I apologize, we ran out of a little bit, ran out of time, but um, that concludes our webinar for 3DX Max and, uh, versus Showcase. So if you would like to uh, follow the link above um, and to view our upcoming events and presentations over Autodesk products um, and to register uh, for an invite to attend. Uh, so once again, I would like to um, you know thank you for attending our webinar. My name is Rudy Arona. I'm with Applied Technology Group, uh, where our main focus is uh, building stronger relationships with our clients, resulting in greater success. Thank you.